There are a lot of videos out there which talk about what it's like going to the basic airborne course known as jump school. And I thought I'd like to share with you some of my personal experiences going through the program in 1968. Not so much about the training, because I don't think that's changed very much over the years, but more of the personal backstories I thought you might find interesting. I made my first jump December 2nd, 1968 at Friar Drop Zone in Fort Benning, Georgia. Well, when we first got to Fort Benning, it was pretty late, <clears throat> and um, everyone on the bus was probably half asleep. And the bus driver told everybody that they better wake up because they'll be hollering and yelling before we get off the bus. And that was pretty much true. When we got off the bus, we went into a small administration building uh, and we turned in our orders and filled out some paperwork. From there, we went uh, to a supply building and we were issued our mattresses. They were the thin bunk mattresses. They were rolled and tied with a strap, and we carried them to the barracks, um, which were these old World War II or pre-World War II barracks. Uh, by the time we finally got to bed, it was pretty late, probably one or two o'clock in the morning. At 4.30 in the morning, we were very rudely awakened by our barrack sergeant uh, Staff Sergeant Herbert Merriman. He was a um, crusty old guy, lifer, uh, who used to brag that he was in three wars and never got a Purple Heart. At any rate, we didn't get it up. Didn't get up enough, quick enough. Didn't get up in quick enough for him. And we went from the rack into the front leaning rest, and we did push-ups until our arms were tired. And that was our introduction. To Fort Benning, Georgia. Now the barracks that we were in, they were a basic no frills barracks. They were heated by coal and if you were on fire watch you had to shovel coal to keep the heat going. Uh, you would wake up in the morning and blow your nose and your snot would be black from the coal dust. Uh, the showers weren't much better there was probably enough hot water for about 10 showers. So unless you were pretty quick, you were guaranteed to have a lukewarm, if not a cold shower. Now, these barracks had second floor little porch overhangs. One night when I was on fire watch, I was at the top of the stairs and I was writing a letter and I had my back turned to the staircase and the door that led into the barracks. I felt the presence of someone behind me. I turned and there was Sergeant Merriman, his boots in his hands, and he was gonna be catching some guys that were out on this porch overhang playing cards. He had climbed up half the staircase and I never heard him. This guy was a ninja warrior. At any rate, he caught these guys playing cards and he put them into the dying cockroach for probably the better part of an hour. Um, and that was their punishment. And I can assure you they didn't play cards anymore during their time at jump school. Now, in jump school, they love to try to find a reason to kick you out. For me, it was a couple of whiskers on my neck right about here. Two days in a row, I fell out for a formation with one or two little hairs, little stubbles on my neck. And they told me that if it was going to happen again, if it was the third day in a row, I would be kicked out. So I obviously shaved that night and the next morning until my skin was raw to make sure that there was nothing on my neck that would get me kicked out of jump school. <clears throat> At any rate, we got into Tower Week, and the training intensified, and the runs got a little bit longer, and uh, it was pretty much the same as you might expect it today. Um, uh, 
One night, they invited a small group of trainees um, into, a, into a day room, and they served us coffee and donuts, and they tried to get us to re-enlist um, uh, for uh, Special Forces or Pathfinder School. Also, during that week, it was Thanksgiving, and um, we were required to wear our dress greens to the mess hall for Thanksgiving dinner. And we fell out for formation, what they referred to as towing the cable. And I very foolishly thought, because we were in our dress greens, that we were going to march to the mess hall. But foolish me, we did double time to the mess hall in our dress greens. And by the way, it was a fantastic Thanksgiving dinner. Up until that time, and I was 20 years old, it was the best dinner I ever had. Well, we get through Tower Week, and we have the weekend prior to Jump Week. Uh, Saturday morning, we spent, uh, they drove us out to the drop zone, and we spent that morning picking up rocks off a of Friar drop zone. And it was about then that I started losing my mind. I started to forget everything that I had been taught. Sunday made it a little worse because they brought in some insurance salesmen from town and they were trying to sell life insurance policies the day before our first jump. Um, I also um, happened to call my brother, who my older brother, who had been in the 82nd about 10 years prior to that, and I'm asking him things like, what happens if I have a malfunction? And he incredulously would ask me, didn't they train you? And I know they did, but at the time, I couldn't remember much of what, when, what I was trained. <clears throat> at any rate, I didn't get much sleep that night. And um, Monday morning comes along and it's uh, chow and then off to the harness shed. As we filed into the harness shed, there were, um, the, the chutes were piled high in mounds, and there was a young officer on a 10-foot ladder or so, and he was throwing down your, your, your chutes. And you would catch the chute, and you would hold it like it was going to, like it was a piece of glass that was going to break. Uh, the reserves were, I think they were on a long table, and you picked up your reserve. And I was pretty fortunate because they used me as a demonstrator to, uh, to demonstrate how to put on the chute. As a result, the chute fit like a glove. It was terrific. Well, after a couple of hours of sitting around doing nothing and you can't go to the bathroom and you can't talk and you can't go anywhere, um, it's, it's out to the tarmac to board the plane. And um, as, we left the, as we left the harness shed, there was a, a picture of a trooper in a very poor prepare to land attitude with a sign that said he broke his leg. Um, all our jumps were from C-119s, which are very small and very loud and very noisy planes. And we board the plane and as soon as we are airborne, they open the doors. And this is, one of the jump masters said, is everybody happy? And we all said, yes, Sergeant Airborne. And he said, good, let's sing a song. And they proceeded to sing Blood on the Risers, which was pretty aggravating because this was our first jump and they're singing, gory, gory, what a hell of a way to die. And then after that was done, one of the jump masters actually sat in the open doorway of the plane. And after a minute or two, he yelled and fell right out of the plane. And everyone was pretty shocked because we didn't realize he didn't have a static line hooked up. He didn't need one. He pulled his own chute, but we didn't realize it at the time. So we were all pretty freaked out. Well, it gets ready now for the first jump. And um, we get the commands, get ready, stand up, hook up. So as I hooked up my static line, something felt very strange in my back. 
Uh, the static lines are attached with rubber bands, and I thought I felt something loose. So I turned to the guy behind me, and I asked him if everything was okay, and he said, yeah, everything's fine. Um, as we got to check equipment, I became panicked, and I kept asking him, is everything okay? And he said, yes, everything's fine. The command goes to stand in the door, go, and as we shuffle to the door, I'm going behind me, is everything okay? And he goes, yeah, yeah. And I said, are you sure? And he goes, yeah. And I'm in a panic mode and I don't remember anything what's happening. I don't remember any of my instructions. And I hit the door and I leaped up and out like a spring. And of course, everything came back to me and I remembered everything what to do. The chute opens, it's peaceful, it's quiet. Everyone's excited. The other voices you hear from other jumpers sound like they're in a dream. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful experience until we start getting close to the ground. I look, I see the smoke. I see that I need a right, right front PLF. I hit the ground, I made a perfect PLF. It was terrific. And that was my first jump. And, um, after that, we couldn't jump for three days. The winds were too strong. So we didn't make any more jumps until Friday. We didn't jump Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Friday, we made three jumps. Uh, during that time, um, one of the interesting experiences was we're on the ground, we're watching other jumps. This poor young fella, he had a Mae West, and they're telling him, you know, tower, whatever, pull your reserve, you have a malfunction. And this young fella, he's not looking up. He doesn't know from nothing. He finally looks up, sees he's got a malfunction, and they're trying to get him to pull his reserve. He pulls his reserve. He doesn't shake it out into the wind. It drops between his legs. He starts crying, and ultimately he hit the ground like a ton of bricks. <laughs> Poor guy. I don't know whatever happened to him. Um... But um, that was, that was the, the three-jump day. We didn't jump Saturday. We, didn't, we had our equipment jump on Sunday. Um, that was kind of a bad experience for me. Uh, the weapons containers, they have boards in the weapons containers. And the weapons containers have to be tied at the ankle, which you have to untie them on your way down. And they always said, if you're going to land on your weapons container side, that's okay. Just land on it. You'll be fine. Well, I didn't listen. I look. I, it, it comes to the point where I have to land on my weapons container. Uh, when I got to the ground, I hesitated my left leg. And I had a three-point landing, feet, knees, and head. My leg, I injured it somehow. It hurt like hell. And... I gather up my chute and I start limping off the drop zone and a sergeant comes up to me and says, nobody, nobody, nobody walks off my drop zone. You better double time it off my drop zone. So gimpy leg and all, I had to double time it off the drop zone. And, um, and that was that. We got our wings on the drop zone. That later that afternoon, <clears throat> they came through the barracks, they passed out orders they came back later that night and everybody's orders were changed and we shipped out on Monday and that was that. And that was some of my experiences going through the uh, basic airborne course at Fort Benning, Georgia. Um, it was a pretty interesting time. Um, uh, all I can say is that uh, Tower Week was, was okay. Uh, our ground week was okay. Tower week was a little better. The runs got longer. The, the things got more intense. Jump jump week was a blur. I don't remember the three jumps very much. Uh, I remember the first jump very vividly. The middle three jumps, which by the way were all Hollywood jumps, and the only the only equipment jump was the fifth one. There were no night jumps that week. And um, that was jump school. A little different than what maybe they're going through today, but training was the same, but 
Um, they didn't have to, at least they didn't have to blow coal dust out of your nose. So at any rate, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Um, thanks for listening and uh, have a nice day.